In this demonstration, we shall see the effect of an electric current causing magnetic fields. For this experiment, we use a power supply and a meter to show the current, a variable resistor to control the current. And this is the wire with compass needles around. The compass needles, in their normal way, they should point to the north, to the geographical north, as indicated by this other compass needle. All compass needles at the moment are pointing in the same direction. We shall now switch on the electric circuit. Current is flowing and we shall go to see the compass needles. When switch on the current, the compass needles will change direction. We tap them a little bit to see that the compass needles show a circle, whereas the other compass needle didn't change direction. This is unaffected because it is away from the current. When we switch off, the compass needles will go back to their original position. Switching on, they change direction. Sometimes I need a tap. This is an indication that the current which is flowing in the wire is causing a magnetic field. In this setup we shall see the magnetic field pattern around a coil. For this setup we require a coil and a power supply. Presently the coil is switched off and we have some iron filings to see the magnetic field pattern. For the time being there is no magnetic field, the coil is switched off. We shall switch on the coil and we tap and we will see that the iron filings are taking position showing lines of flux. That is the pattern of the magnetic field formed by the coil. In this setup, we shall demonstrate the DC motor effect, which is the effect of an electric current in a magnetic field. We use a cell, one cell here, a double A cell, a series of strong, very strong magnets. This can be shown on any other plate, metal plate, it sticks to it. And some copper loops with different shapes to complete the circuit. To set up this DC motor, we use the magnets, we place them on a metal plate for rigidity, then the, bed, the cell. And then we fix up a loop such that it will touch the positive side of the cell and the negative side of, this, of the same cell to complete the circuit. As current flows in the loop, the current creates a, a magnetic effect, magnetism, and that magnetism will interact with the magnets below and it starts to rotate. In this setup we also shall demonstrate the laws of electromagnetic induction. We use a center zero galvanometer a coil with many turns and a permanent magnet. Galvanometer reads zero. I'm going to pick up the magnet and I'm going to push it in slowly into the coil and I see deflection to the right. When I stop the magnet, 
the deflection will be zero. As I pull the magnet out slowly, the deflection will be to the left, in the opposite direction than before. If I push in the magnets quickly, the deflection will be bigger than before, but in the same direction to the right. As I pull the magnet out faster, the deflection will be bigger than before and to the left. This demonstrates Faraday's law and Lenz's law together. This setup is used to demonstrate the laws of electromagnetism, namely Lenz's law and Faraday's law. For this setup we use a copper tube and a magnet, which is here, and the same size piece of iron. They are cylindrical in shape, almost similar. We start with the piece of iron and we place it in the tube and release and we note that it falls very quickly then we pick up the magnet and we repeat the same procedure we drop it into the tube and it takes a long time to come down now the the copper tube is changed by a plastic tube and I'm going to drop the same two objects, the piece of iron and the magnet. The piece of iron is dropped through the tube and it falls down quickly. The magnet is dropped through the tube and it falls also very quickly. So this illustrates that as the magnet moves through the copper tube, it creates an electric current inside the tube which opposes the fall of the magnet. This is the Van der Graaff generator which demonstrates the effects of electrostatics. This Van der Graaff consists of an electric motor down here. This electric motor will spin a belt, this belt, a rubber belt. The rubber belt goes round and round up to the dome and back down to this bottom part. As it rotates it carries electric charge from down here to the upper dome. When the dome in the upper part builds up enough electric charge the voltage becomes so high that it will spark between these two domes. We shall now switch on the Van der Graaff generator. The belt is spinning. Then we shall rotate this dome to come closer to the upper dome. When the voltage is high enough, it will start to spark. That is this part. To demonstrate the principles of repulsion, we have another sphere up here, lead sphere, suspended by a nylon thread. And when we switch on, we are going to switch on. As the charge builds up, the ball charges up. And because it has the same charge as the surrounding, it is repelled and stays up. Now if we approach the other small sphere close to the large dome, it starts to spark. Since this, the big sphere loses charge, the ball falls down, charges up and then falls down as the spark occurs.
these small spheres, conducting spheres, are being charged. As they charge up, they repel each other and bounce up. And then they fall down to become charged again. And the cycle repeats. <laughs>